بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هون And inshallah now we'll do our favorite part the question and answer session inshallah Okay, so real quickly the schedule, inshallah, we'll have the question and answer session right now. We have about 20 minutes left till Salat al-Maghrib. 20 to 30 minutes left till Salat al-Maghrib. However many questions we can answer, we'll answer them. If we have enough time, we'll try to answer all of them. If we don't have enough time, then inshallah, some other time when we have another event, we can answer those questions or you can ask your local imam. Or if you want, after the program, you can come to us. So right now we'll have a question and answer session. After that, we'll, have salat, we'll take a break for Salat al-Maghrib. After Salat al-Maghrib, will be one speech, inshallah. And then after, while the speech is going on, inshallah, the food will be prepared. And then you can go for food after that, inshallah. So right now, we'll have a question and answer session, inshallah. So all the scholars will be asked to come up here, inshallah. Inshallah, if Shaykh Hasidullah and Shaykh Abdullah can come to the stage, inshallah, to bless us with their presence. They're scholars recently graduated. And it'd be nice if they can come up and bless us and help us answering some questions. Uh, Yahya will, will walk around if you have any questions. Inshallah, Hafiz Yahya is walking around if anyone needs to send any questions. In. There's a question here and I'll just answer it right now. The question is asked, is it okay or allowed to shave, take a haircut, or cut your nails while fasting for men? In regards to shaving, the ulama rahimahumallahu ta'ala have deferred, the jurisprudence have said their opinions. So I'll leave that one. And take haircut or cut your nails while fasting for men. It is permissible for a person, for a male or for a man to cut his nails, even for women, to cut their nails or cut their hair in the month of Ramadan. Inshallah. So that's the answer for that. Uh, someone asked this question. If the medication is taken at the time of suhoor, um, and the meds are released into the brain every four hours. Um, is it permissible to take the meds before suhoor? Um, as long as it is before suhoor, uh, you take it inside through your mouth um, and it's done before suhoor, uh, it is permissible. Um, after that, whatever effect happens, whether you feel sleepy or whatever nausea happens, it's, it's totally fine. Um, so it is permissible to um, take your meds and obviously uh, try to take it before suhoor, um, before you finish, uh, well, you begin your fast. Bismillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah. Alhamdulillah, all these muftis are sitting here, so inshallah, if I do make a mistake, they can correct me. The question is, if a person travels overseas and the journey takes two days to reach the destination, is it okay if he or she makes the intention to fast, but later on he or she break the fast during the journey? He or she only make up the number of days missed without kafara. <coughs> uh, the issue of fasting for a musafir is very clear in the Quran. It says, uh, that if a person is going to be traveling, then if he doesn't think that he'll be able to make up those fasts or keep fast while he's traveling, so he shouldn't keep the fast and rather make up those fasts afterwards. Make qada, not kafara. He will just make up the fast that he has missed. But if he feels that he can fast, then he's also allowed to fast. It is not a azima. This is a ruhsa. That he is allowed. Is an allowance given to him? He's not forced not to fast. He may fast if he feels that he can. And if he feels that he might end up breaking it in the middle, then he should make up those fasts afterwards, inshallah. Bismillah rahman rahim Question is, at what age is salah wajib for a child? <clears throat> salah is fard, compulsory for a child once he reaches the age of puberty. And you should start encouraging your child or your children at the age of seven and enforce it even more at the age of 10. So that way by the time they reach the age of puberty, they are already in the habit of performing salah on their own. But nevertheless, salah is compulsory and furl on a child at the age of puberty when he passes puberty. We cannot determine that age 
of what that usually is, but usually before the age, till the age of 15, any time before the age of 15, that age is there and it happens. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. If you want to keep a fast on a random day in the future, then in brackets or in parentheses it says wajib mu'ayyan. Wajib mu'ayyan, mu'ayyan means specified. So it can't be random. And you get sick. Do you have to make it up later? So if it's random and you just make, if you want to just make, you know, you say, okay, on the 16th I'm going to fast. You're not making compulsory and you say you just have a desire to fast on the day, just a random day, it's fine. If it's wajib mu'ayyan, meaning you have made it compulsory on yourself and you have specified the date and you get sick on that day, then yes, you will have to repeat that fast on another day. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Another question. Is Maghrib at the time of sunset or five minutes after sunset? Maghrib time comes in right at sunset. And obviously, as I mentioned, that, you know, maybe we should delay maybe a minute, but not more than that. But salah time, if the ca uh, calendars are accurate to sunset, then yes, salah time and Maghrib time and iftar time all will come in right at the time of sunset, whichever rain is rain on the calendars. <clears throat> the question is, can we do mouthwash, can we use mouthwash during fasting? Once again, it's the same thing as tasting, because you have that taste in your mouth, that taste, whatever it may be, you have that minty taste in your mouth. So there is a big chance it's one of those things that will be reprehensible, it will be disliked. If a person can avoid it, he should at all causes, because there's a very big possibility that that taste might go down your throat, which will nullify your fast. So it's something that we should avoid at all causes. Of course, if we definitely need to, then it's okay, but there's always a chance that your fast will be nullified. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> After suhoor, sometimes a little food is left in the mouth. Swallow it or spit it out. Well, you can spit it out or you can spit it out if you want. If it's smaller than a chickpea, and you sm if it's smaller than the size of a chickpea, you know, like the chole in Urdu, but chickpea. If it's smaller than that, then uh, if it's smaller than that and you swallow it, then your fast doesn't break. If it's bigger or the equal to that size, then your, your fast does break. It does invalidate your fast. So if it's a big piece, the best thing is just to be careful, to be cautious, just spit anything out of your mouth after Fajr time has started. Just spit it out of your mouth, so that way you don't have to, uh, that way you can be a little bit more cautious in regards to your fast breaking or not. The other question is, can you brush your teeth before the azan for Fajr, but after after suhoor, the pre-dawn meal, only one a day before Fajr. Uh, can you brush your uh, teeth before uh, the Azan of Fajr? Yes, you can. So uh, before the Azan of Fajr, you can do whatever you want. Okay, but when Fajr, when Fajr starts, and that's a different question. But before Salat al-Fajr, after your suhoor, yes, that's preferable too. I don't know actually what the dentist would say. But yes, you can. You can brush your teeth before Salat al-Fajr. Before Fajr time starts. Um, from the lady side there's a question um, this lady was uh, diagnosed with uh, anorexia may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala firstly give uh, shifai kamil ajla um, she had lost her period and gained most of her weight back and finally after 7 months just got the menses back her mom has requested uh, for her to not fast this year um, and she had a question about uh, whether she should fast or whether she should not fast. Um, well, <clears throat> firstly, if uh, that fast makes her uh, in a position where she becomes very ill again, um, obviously the mother has the care and comfort for that child more than anyone. Um, so if that uh, fast does become a problem, uh, mentally, physically, uh, for that person, um, then she should refrain from it and use the, the, the ability and the, the, the chance which Allah has given to the, to the Muslims um, that she can give fidya and you know, proceed. Um, but if she feels that you know, it's not giving a problem, it's not causing any issues, um, you know, console with her mother, uh, get permission, um, and it's not having a big effect in her, in her life or in her uh, physical form, 
then by all means, you know, uh, make dua to Allah to give her energy and uh, sustain her in the best of ability. Um, and by all means, then you should fast. So it's one of those things that you have to look at as a person, see where you stand when you do that fast. Maybe before the month of Ramadan comes, try to spend, uh, you know, till 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, keeping yourself hungry. Uh, if you feel some problems, maybe you don't need to fast. If you feel some problems affecting yourself or your body, then uh, then you'll know what to do in the month of Ramadan. So it's more of a personal thing, see how it is, how that sickness is lasts, inshallah. Inshallah, there's uh, two questions here. One is, uh, the first question is, when is Qaylula? Can it replace sleep? That is, stay awake all night, not necessarily in ibadah, and sleep in the day. What time is best? <coughs> Qaylula is a sunnah sleep that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this was a sunnah of his, that it was usually done after lunch. When a person has his lunch, you take a rest for 15 minutes. So the question of can it replace night and all that, Allahu Adam, the actual time for Qaylula is after the lunch. The second question is a, a bit of a lengthy one. The person asking the question concerning the time of which we stop eating when fasting. Do we stop fasting at the astronomical twilight or at nautical twilight? And he, be, he goes on to explain for us what astronomical twilight is, which is, uh, to sum it up, that using tools, using um, telescopes and that to gauge when the sun dips below the horizon, and nautical twilight is that physically with our naked eye, we know when the sun is gone from the horizon, when the edge of the sun, we no longer see it, it goes right below the horizon. <coughs> so obviously we're not a specialist in you know, astronomy and all of that, but we know for one thing is for sure that at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these instruments were not used. Things were gauged simply by vision, by sight. So the most ihtiyat we can do and say is that when we no longer see the light on the horizon, when the sun has dipped below the horizon and it's no longer visible, or when it's, it can be said that where we live, that the sun has set, then at that time we'll be allowed to break our fast. And to go into these other details, um, inshallah, Mufti Ani Karam can be inshallah approached. Jazakumullah. The question is, uh, how does one know if their sins are forgiven and if they ask for, for after they ask for forgiveness? <clears throat> Firstly, when we make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Imam Nuhi rahmatullahi alayhi wa salihin, mentions a couple of conditions in which when a person approaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for repentance, mentions that how a person should, you know, feel really ashamed of the act that he might have done, whatever he might have done and whatever he's making tawbah for, that he, you know, he's really sincere, he's shameful for what he did, and he makes full intention that he will never return to that action again. And then he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah forgive me. And inshallah in his lifetime if he sees that, you know, that I'm not going again, I'm not approaching that sin again, or I've always been saved from that sin, then Allah, that's you being saved from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and being forgiven from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But nevertheless, a person should always make intention when making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the three things that Imam Nuhi rahmatullahi alayhi mentions, that you feel shameful of what you did, and you make full irada and you're very, you know that you're never going to return towards that thing again, towards that uh, bad deed, towards that evil deed. And number three, you make full intention that you will never return to that deed again. And then inshallah, if you make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that tawbah will, will be forgiven and accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bismillah rahman rahim This is uh, two questions. Uh, if you know, this is your question. There's actually three questions. The top question you can ask Mufti Samir personally. Uh, the other questions on the card is, one is, if you backbite on someone, will you break your fast? Or if you say a bad word or get mad at someone? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in describing backbiting in the Quran, He says, أَيُّهِبُّ أَحَدُكُمْ أَنْ يَأْكُلَ لَحْمَ أَخِيهِ مَيْتًا when he describes backbiting, he says, do you, any of you desire that you eat the flesh of your brother? Uh, so it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, would you desire eating it? So it may seem as if you're eating the flesh 
obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is figuratively telling us uh, that you know it's a very bad thing to do your fast sharia it will not break your fast will be fulfilled your farz will be fulfilled now comes the matter of reward I mentioned in my section that uh, the Prophet sallallahu says a person who does not refrain from evil talk or evil things then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not care if this person leaves food, de leaves his desires, Allah does not care. So it's very important that though our farz will be fulfilled, but the reward, you may not gain any reward for it. The last question, uh, will you break your fast if you miss your sahri and intentionally miss fajr? Um, this is a different, I don't know if it's referring to Ramadan, I don't know if it's referring to a wajib mu'ayyin fa fast, I don't know what type of fast it's referring to, but since the topic is about Ramadan, if a person misses his sahri and na'uzu billah misses his fajr intentionally, his fast will still commence after fajr or whenever this person wakes up. There's about five minutes left for Salat al-Maghrib. So inshallah, we'll get fresh enough for Salat al-Maghrib, then we'll have one more speech. After that, the food will be ready, inshallah. Uh, the food for the women will be in the Dar Nur, uh, the cafeteria area for Dar Nur. There are some sisters that know where the area is. Inshallah, they can uh, lead you to the way. They can lead you to where the Dar cafeteria is. Uh, we've already set it up, inshallah. After Salat al-Maghrib, we'll set up the food. As for the men, it will be in the bottom parking lot. There's already tables and chairs set up there too, inshallah. The food for the men will be in the bottom, the last parking lot. And for the women, it will be in the Dar Nur cafeteria, inshallah. And the last program will be upstairs. If you could just take off all your belongings, inshallah, the last program will be in the masjid. That, that would be a little difficult for us to come back right after salah. So we'll have the, uh, the last speech, last session after the prayer, and then we'll have food, inshallah. So the last session will be upstairs, so please take up your belongings, and if you see any trash, grab that too. So that way it's easier for the volunteers to clean up this area, inshallah. Jazakumullah. <laughs> Mawla ya salli wa sallim dhani